is open source technology, working with uh, hydrogen, uh, all sorts of stuff, getting people involved in the community, young guy, and leading the younger generations. 2013 Global Breakthrough Energy Movement. I was very proud to introduce Mr. Russ Grease. That's for you. Thank you so much. Thanks for supporting the supporters. Thank you. This is, uh, yeah. We can explain it. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is incredible. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, some of you may be asking why I just brought a camera up there. Well, that's because that's what I do. Um, uh, if I don't film it, you guys don't see it. That's why they're filming it. Broadcasting live is very important to me. Okay, so my name is Russ Grease. Um, this monitor isn't on. Can you turn it on? Broken? No problem. Sorry. Okay. Um, RWGresearch.com is basically where you can go and find everything I've done. If anybody, well, first of all, who all here is, who knows who I am? Like, who follows me on YouTube? Okay, so how many people have never heard of me? Okay, hi. Oh, <laughs> I'm a crazy individual in my garage. Welcome to the madness. Basically, rwgresearch.com is where you can go and find everything you need to know about me. Um, what I do is document everything on there, so you should be able to find anything you'd like to know about me. Um, opensourceenergy.org, um, with the hyphens in there, is a forum that I uh, help run. Uh, originally started with a buddy of mine, and it's a way that we I kept getting so many emails that I wanted to find a way to communicate to people, and somebody donated a website, and that's what we decided to call it. So my website and forums are the places to go if you want to know more. Um, open source research, that's what I do. Um, that's what I try to do. It's my passion. I feel like that is what I'm here for. Um, live open science, we will discuss later. And uh, in case none of you know what that is, that's great, because it's something we kind of thought up. It's good. Open source garage lab research. That's what I'm going to talk about today. I would like to do something first. I would like to uh, say a little prayer and, and thank you for why we're here. Um, so, Lord, thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. Thank you for uh, the ability that you give me to be here because uh, you've given me the gift that's gotten me where I am. And the volunteers here have put this together because we need a movement. And uh, I just want to say uh, a prayer to the people that are in this town that basically practically got flooded out. And uh, glad that uh, we're all still here and the people that, that aren't, uh, let them rest easy. And uh, just want to say thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. So you might have thought that was strange, but. I'm a Christian, and uh, I have a, a strong passion about my faith. So, thank you. Who is Russ Grease? I'm a guy in my garage. <laughs> I basically research, uh, try to research everything I possibly can find out there that, that looks interesting, that I have time to build and uh, construct, and then report on it. Um, basically, what I, what I try to do is prove the technology to myself and all of you get to watch it in my in my videos that I produce. Um, everything I do is basically done on video and then posted on my YouTube and relayed to the world through that and uh, the opensourceenergy.org website. Um, I, I have a passion for building. God's given me a gift to build and I can just think of something and build it. Like Tesla just builds it in his head and then does it. Like that's, that's the way I function. Um, that's just a gift that I have. And so the other, the other portion of this, besides building and testing stuff, is, is sharing it to people who can see it. Because frankly, if you didn't share the information, none of you would be here right now. I mean, think about it. If someone didn't tell you about this, you wouldn't be here. So sharing of information is very important. So basically, I'm just a guy in my garage, supported by individuals like you that are here uh, willing to just pitch in, basically. 
All right, some past and current research things that I've done. Now, I'll be going back on some of these so we'll run through them fairly quick. Stanley Meyer. Now, I'm going to say Stanley Meyer and some of you are going to, oh, that guy, I'm a fraud. Okay, that's fine. Just hear me out. Okay? If you're that way, oh, maybe you're not. But I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, because what I do is I try to prove or disprove what's real and what's not. So Stanley Meyer was one of those big opportunities to prove or disprove what's real. Um, so that's one of my, my, probably spent the most time on is Stanley Meyer's research. <coughs> Half noble gas engine, who knows what that is? Okay, for those of you who don't, Pat is a uh, individual, I forgot where he's from, another country. Hungry. Where? Hungry. That's right. And um, he made this motor that ran on noble gases. Um, uh, argon, helium, neon, krypton, and xenon. And basically, you put this gas in this sealed chamber with a piston, which is a, a standard use of Volkswagen engine. Uh, for his first prototype. He had a bus engine as well that he was working on. And you can fill this up with this noble gas and fire these electrodes, create this plasmoid of some kind, and it would just run. And he could unhook the batteries at a high RPM because if you, if you did it at a low RPM, the uh, alternator wasn't enough to continue uh, to run the system by itself. But he could disconnect the batteries and run this thing. It's a fascinating piece of technology, so that was an opportunity. Um, the reason I started the PAT stuff was because the Stanley Meyer and the PAT, um, which I'll talk about later, the Stanley Meyer's EPG um, uses a gas. And uh, when I got the opportunity to work on the PAT mobile gas engine, uh, or just work on it, build it for nothing, I guess, um, I was able to combine the two to do one thing would help me with another. I can explain that in a little while. A Voltzilla. What the heck is that? All right, that's actually a word somebody made up on accident that I used for the electric motorcycle that I built using nothing but resources. Okay, um, the first project I think I really ever did and posted online probably was that one. Um, that I think that was probably five years ago. So it's been a long time, maybe six years ago. And I basically decided I'm going to see if I can build a working electric motorcycle with my resources. And I ended up getting a fork truck for free, scrapped it out, bought the small components I need, converted the electric fork truck into the motor that I needed for the electric motorcycle, and I came out $20 a head. <laughs> it's crazy, and I'm driving down the road on an electric motorcycle. So we can talk about that more later. That was, that was one of the things that really got me started in the beginning because a gentleman interviewed me and uh, put me in a book, actually. Uh, you guys, uh, Global BEM, actually, it's on your page that you sell products on or whatever, it's uh, how to make an electric motorcycle by Vogel, somebody Vogel, yeah, Vortex-based math, uh, the second thing I did, I started with Stanley Meyer, and then I was like, everybody tried this, it doesn't work, let's try something else. So I tried vortex-based math, and I got a hold of Randy Powell, and uh, Gregor, and uh, Daniel Nuez, me and him, buddies for the longest time. Me and him have grown together. It's been a fantastic adventure. So vortex space math really caught my attention. If, if none of you have actually looked into how that math works, oh, it's amazing. just try it. Just, just listen to what Randy says on his YouTube videos. He describes just the math. And if you're really interested, go look at Marco's videos online because he brings the world into the math. It's very fascinating. Um, it, it's, it's fascinating. So that's another thing that I did. Edward Lee Skelman. Anybody heard of that guy? Hands oh, of course. Fantastic. Just the strangest little thing. PMH, okay? Permanent, well, perpetual motion holder. Um, everybody that watches my YouTube video on that, which is a lot, tell me it's basic understanding of magnetism. I'm like, why didn't anybody teach me it? If it's basic. Give me a book. Where is it at? And maybe it is, but for me it was new. It was a great learning tool. Built that thing. Just, just amazed at what you could do. So I hung it on the wall, okay? Built a little one out of a U-bolt, not that big. Hung it on the wall, was making more videos, doing more stuff, kind of forgot about it. Two years later, I was moving stuff in my basement and it was still hanging on my wall. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Let's go see when I posted that last video. It was the next day. So I'm like, okay, 
exactly two years later. I pulled that bar off and lit that light up, and I thought, this is pretty cool. You know, people really learn from that video. Um, it's just, it's basically a learning tool for, for opening up the imaginations with what it is for me. 3D printing. Oh, boy. Yeah. Nate and the gentleman, my name is Jeff, got me started in 3D printing. If you haven't used a 3D printer, I suggest you find someone that has one or get one and try it. So when you're going, how do I get this paint out of a five gallon bucket? There's no bung, there's no pour. How can I pour that out of a bucket? It's gonna go on the floor. This is what my, my wife asked me. How do I pour this out of this bucket? How long do you need that? I don't know, I'll start painting tomorrow. Okay, give me about an hour. Drew one up on Google SketchUp and print it out. Press that right into the bung hole. Now I have a spout for my, my, my paint in my five gallon bucket. 3D printing is amazing. Endless possibilities for researchers in their, in their garage lab, believe me. And many more, um, many more as in, if you want, I have all of the things I could possibly fit in two vehicles here at my booth out there. So many more is out there, I'm talking about. All right, so why is a guy that does random energy research in his garage here at the Global Energy Conference? Anybody got any answers on that? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I think I got better. Because somebody thought we're funny. This guy thought it would be funny for me to be here, so I hope you're laughing when you leave. I don't know. <laughs> Poor fellow. By the way, his English name is Jay. Just so you know. I call him Jay. That's his name. <laughs> no, really. Some of the best inventions come from a guy or a gal in their garage. Anybody agree? Yeah. So think, think about it. I couldn't get a prime example, but I'm sure you all have one in your head. You know, probably the... Anybody heard of you? You know, one of those. What lights didn't turn on? What are you doing? Okay. Um, what is open source to me? Okay, you all have a different different opinion on this, I'm sure. But for me, in a personal standpoint, it's nothing more than sharing information. That, I mean, that's what it is. If if somebody didn't tell you about this conference, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be learning about what you're learning about this whole past three days. So. You know, open source, the words open source, people think of like open source products, open source this, open source software, but to me it's just purely sharing of information and doing it freely. And that's what it is to me. So, very important, open source is why I got this far, because I had a, a passion and a, and a thought of just being open and free to people. It's been an amazing experience. One of the benefits of open source. Um, anybody that's been here for the last couple of days may have already heard some of these answers, and probably better than mine, but I'll give you mine. Um, I Googled this just for fun. I wanted to see what was out there, and from PCWorld.com, I only listed the five, top five, but there was 10 of them. The first one is security, and this was from a business standpoint, but this also works for my application. Security, quality, customability, freedom, Flexibility on the, excuse me, the top five on their list. I've highlighted security and freedom because that's what it's done for me. Okay, a lot of people working in the, I don't like free energy term, but the alternative, alternative energy and just open-minded thinking people have freedom and security by sharing their ideas, okay? Let's say I'm a guy like Stan Myers working on this project and I'm holding the key, I'm holding the key up here. That guy's gone. We don't, now where are we? We're back at square one. So, security and freedom. You have freedom of speech, and you have security that you said what you said, and now 100 people know it. Now I'm not, I'm not the only guy that's gonna be you know, hurting later and not sharing the information. I can stand up here all day and share all the information that I wanted to, and now you guys have it. You share it with 10 other people, 10 other people, how are they gonna stop that? I mean, think about it. Yeah. All right, so security and freedom, okay? One can share the information freely and still secure their right to own their material. I am not an expert on true open sourcing ideas, but you can get licensed for open sourcing ideas. You can share your ideas without having people steal them from you, okay? I'm not gonna go into details on that because I'm not an expert on that. Um, I think there was a lady here this morning that may have been more contained on that, I'm not sure. But think about that. When you share information, the information cannot get lost. That's what I was just telling you guys. 
stuff getting lost is why we're here right now. Okay, the ancients sounds like they had it from all the different people I talked to. They had the answers. Why are we here right now in this in this predicament? Okay, why is open sourcing important? We kind of talked about this already. Security, freedom, no suppression. It's hard to suppress something that everybody knows, and no loss of information. Again, it's all about sharing information. To me, it's all about sharing information. The reason that I made it as far as I have in this research and I'm up on the stage is because there's a lot of people out there that support me that I try to support them back. And that's that's how you have to run your operation if you want this information to be shared and not be lost. Is you have to work as a team, first of all, and you have to work in the open. I'm not worried about anything. A lot of people ask me, are you worried about you know this, you worried about that? Nope. You guys know as much as I do. I don't need to be concerned about anything anybody doing anything to me or anything happening because I'm not the only guy with the information. Okay, so live open science. This was kind of a, a dream, not a real dream, but something I want to try to pursue to make the idea of what I'm doing a lot more feasible. Um, some of you have heard this term, but I haven't used it a whole lot in my actual videos and stuff, but what I do let me start out with this. Live video feed from one research lab to another or many research labs connected together while ex doing experiments. Um, I try to do my, my research live, just like they're broadcasting this live. Um, I use a, a website, uh, which I need to do something different. Justin TV, it's just a live broadcast. They'll let you stream anything you want, pretty much. Um, so I stream what I do live, and people can come and watch what I'm doing. They can hear me talk. I wear a microphone similar to this when I'm doing my research. They can actually hear me talk in audio. They can see what I'm doing. The lag time is maybe two minutes, so it's not too bad on there. Sometimes it's better. Now I'm working on an experiment, and I'm just beating my head on the desk trying to figure something out. And I got 100 people standing behind me on a camera that say, hey, dude, you got a wire hanging off the edge of the table. Is that supposed to be connected? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours to that one. Thanks a lot, guys. But by, by doing that, people can help you like live, like right there. And um, it's pretty fascinating. So you can basically invite anybody you want to watch. You know, As long as it's open, I do mind open. Anybody can come watch. Anybody can listen. Think about this. If they can do it at the time that they're doing it. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Time's have to match. If you can imagine like minds like Albert Einstein, Nikola Tesla, Leonardo da Vinci, Isaac Newton in one place at the same time, the possibilities are endless. Can anybody actually like imagine if those guys are sitting in a room talking? We have the ability right now to do that. Live streaming is the way to do that, and I'm I'm calling that live open science. Um, if you're doing art or something, it can be live open art. I don't know. But I'm doing science research, so that's what I'm doing. Um, so in my opinion, this is a dream that, I, that I'm sharing with you because I want you guys to help pursue it on your own. Okay? Zero fossil fuel, the old fart. <laughs> it's an, he's an older me. It's sad, though, because uh, I'm a young guy. Anyway. <laughs> nice love you too, Russ. Yeah. 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 It's a love. Okay, so that guy does this a lot, like way more than I do, because he's got more time. And I got three small children screaming at me all day long, so it's a little difficult. Um, Zero is a prime example. Gentlemen that you guys just watched, hopefully you did. If you didn't, make sure you see his presentation. He basically is more doing what I would like to do more often. I have a hard time getting in my lab, setting up the camera, and making it work. Okay, I, I just do. Zero seems like you can slap stuff together. Maybe it's your Linux. I don't know. I use Windows. Yes. Whatever. <laughs> Open source. I know, right? right. I'm using Windows. Yeah. Anyway. I know. And you always, always hurt me. Please. You know. <laughs> but Zero's a prime example. He's got, how many followers do you have? Like you said, about 30 to 40 normally? At least when you're on randomly. Oh, when I'm on randomly? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can have between, as many as 30 or 40. 30 think. or 40. So he's got 30 or 40 people watching. If his experiment explodes, you're going to have a great time watching it. Right? <laughs> but if his experiment does something anomaly, and he's broadcasting it live, 
usually recording it. Justin TV records it automatically, and you can watch it later. And you can catch these phenomenons that are having that, that are happening by doing this live open science deal. And I, uh, Ron Bush has probably saved me a few times. I'll tell you a quick little story. I uh, blew a head gasket in my car. For some reason, I thought it'd be fun to broadcast it live. I went into it uh, not knowing what I was doing pretty much. Didn't know any of the torque specs or anything. Raw Bush jumped on there, was like, dude, you need some you need some information. I got it. Dug it up, sent me all the torque settings, helped me out through the whole process. It was, it was a fantastic proof of concept of this sharing of ideas live as it happens. Because my car might not be running right now if I didn't have that. So wide open science. Please share the idea with people. Okay? The only thing I ask is Always give credit where credit is deserved. And this might not be my original idea. A lot of people have the same ideas at once. So but keep that in mind. Um, yeah, that's all. Well, you're here. That's a good start. You can help by getting involved. Okay? Get their butts up and do something. Okay? Get other people out there. Anything's better than nothing. Okay, does anybody agree with that? Okay, yep. anything's better than nothing. I don't care if you walk out and pick up trash off the side of the street. You're helping somebody do something, okay? Help the poor <coughs> zero across the street. Yeah, you across the street. Get it? You'll you figure it out when you're about 80. Okay, so get people off their butts, all right? That's what you got to do. Something that we started, me and a guy by the name of Brad, also goes by the name of Tin Man, we decided to start this pulse motor build off. It was kind of by accident. Um, long story short, his dad passed away, his stepdad, which was pretty much his father. He was pretty bummed out. He said, let's have a friendly competition. Let's do something for fun. Get your mind off of it. So we thought, well, let's build a pulse motor and see who can do better. You know, okay. Well, it ended up being this extraordinary thing that we do every year now. And it's kind of fascinating. The first time we did it, we decided, well, let's just invite everybody, anybody, build off. Anybody. Let's just see what people can build. It'd be fun. So we, we threw the idea out there to people on just a regular YouTube video. I Googled pulse motor. I went to Wikipedia. You know what it said? Nothing. That's what it said. I was like, great, there's no rules. It's a no rule build off. This is great. You have two weeks. Go. And that's what we did. And it was fascinating. People actually donated prizes, okay? People that are just people, more like you guys, just donated prizes for the winners. You know, and the winners were picked by random people like Zero, which are judges of the kinds. Mark Danzi's actually one of our judges this year. And uh, that has been an amazing experience for something that came out of, out of a silly idea, basically, of trying to cheer a guy up. And there are, I've probably met 10 people in the last two years that have you know, gotten a hold of me through this pulse motor competition that have given me ideas that are just like extraordinary. Things, uh, things I wouldn't have thought of if I wouldn't have seen what they were doing. It's a way to bring people together for a common, common goal. A pulse motor may not be really useful, but you'd be amazed. You'd be amazed at how many people get off their butt and, and just do something that, that when they see this. A lot of people have never built a pulse motor. Hey, go find a VCR, glue some magnets on it, get a coil out of something random, you know, and hook a battery up to it and watch it pulse, you know, and then they get intrigued by that. And then after the pulse motor competition actually ends, they pursue doing more. And they pursue doing more and they get involved. And every year we do this, it brings somebody that kind of lost track of what they really want to pursue back into what they were trying to do when they, you know, originally started. I've been talking so much in the last two days that I'm so dry. My apologies. So Pulse Motor Build Off, if anybody would like to see that, um, the last two competitions I posted on my website, you can see all the entries and you can see the kind of motivation it gives people. Um, I ask them when people do this to give just a little peek of motivation in their videos. And I've gotten emails from people that are just like, dude, you know, thank you for doing that because it got me back into doing what I want to do. And it's, it's been a fascinating experience. You can help the little guy 
okay? I'm a little guy, and this is a guy in my garage. By giving them what you can, whether it be funds, parts, or just encouragement, okay? I honestly think that I'm standing on this stage now because, I, because I'm an encouraging person, not because I can build stuff, not because I can do stuff, not because, you know, I can lift something out of my head in no time. That's not why I'm up here. I think I'm up here because I encourage people. But I wouldn't be here if I didn't get encouraged, okay? That's, that's, just, that's just honest. And Randy Powell has actually been one of my prime motivated when I first started because... He, he, me and him would call each other on the phone and he would sacrifice his time just to talk to me. It's a big deal. I mean, he was a big guy. I knew people all over the world want to talk to that guy. It, it, it motivated me. So encouraging, encouraging people is the most important thing you can possibly do. Funds and parts. Um, I personally will randomly throw up, hey, I need something random, a part here. You know, this is what I'm trying to build. Can, can you possibly help? Um, funds. Uh, basically, I run on funds from people like yourself that just donate 10 bucks here and 5 bucks there. That's how I've gotten where I've gotten. Most importantly, encourage it. Um, I didn't put this up here, but the other thing is actually, let's say that you own a machine shop, okay, and you're following a guy on the internet that's doing some really fascinating stuff. Help the poor guy out and offer him some machining time, you know, if you just, if it's dead running during the night and he know, you know you need, he needs a part. You know, stick your foot out there and volunteer some of that um, resource to them. You know, that's that's what that's how I've gotten where I've gotten as well. People have done that for me. Use your resources. Um, how many how many people out there can actually agree that they use all of their resources around them? How many people recycle? Okay, okay, that's important because. You're, you're giving back a resource that we have to make and trash everything else at the same time. Um, still speak on uh, on using your resources. For instance, um, anybody had a, heard of a heavy trash day? Does anybody know what that is? Okay. In my town, we have what they call a heavy trash day. They do it twice a year. Basically, people can throw just about anything they want on the side of the street, and they will basically take it. Spring and fall cleanouts, what it basically is. One day I always be. I, I thought it would be fun one day to drive around and see what's out there. And throw that stuff out. So I'm, I'm pick a day, find a neighborhood that looks somewhat nice, and I go drive around the neighborhood, and you'd be amazed at what you could find. People throw away stuff that's brand new in the package. I'm like, are you kidding me? I will take that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to put that in my house. It's a nice lampshade. Anyway, um, but. I, I, I drive around and look for stuff. Uh, most people don't realize this, but a lot of the coils that I build, most of them have no regular purchase magnet wire all, all actually on them. It all comes from the back of a CRT TV. The debossing coil has like usually right at 250 foot of magnet wire. It's super simple to just unwrap the tape and kind of clean it up. You've got free magnet wire. Oh, I can't believe how many TVs still on the side of the road and I can't stop. Like, ah, a little bit more magnet wire for free. I gotta get it, you know. <laughs> it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I actually, uh, I have a big giant monitor in my garage lab that's about this big. It's, it's huge. It's a rear project projection DLP TV that I found on the side of the road. The guy said it had a small problem. I said, okay. It's been out in the heat and cold for three years. I've been using it as a monitor. It's a fantastic monitor, you know. 46 inch monitor for free. I mean, use your resources. So how to fund a project, more based on me, crowdfunding is the, is the way that I kind of do it. I don't usually ask for donations, but when I'm working on a particular project and I've run out of TVs on the side of the road, I have to do something. And so I ask people, if you can, just donate this. I'm trying to raise $200 to purchase some capacitors to try to make the pack replication better. You know, and crowdfunding in, in my personal way, I'm not, I am not ready to start like a kickstart because what I'm doing is voluntary and it's all my free time. I don't want to, I don't want to put myself in that predicament of now I have to do that when I'm, I'm volunteering and I, I can only do so much as a person. But that's why the open source is important. If every one of you out there made a small component of something we're building, we could have it in a hundredth of the time if there's a hundred people in there. It would be done in, in a 10 minute period instead of a you know, 100 minute period or 
for the hour period. Use your resources. It's the most important thing that I've done. If you go out there and look at my table of stuff, what I could find to bring, um, I'm going to say about 80% of that has come out of something somebody discarded. Okay? And you'd be amazed at what you could find in the right dumpster. Okay. I don't look like a dumpster diver, but you'd be amazed what you could find in there. <laughs> Grants. This is something that I haven't looked into, but it's probably an option. I am not an expertise on, on grants, but that's an option that you, you guys can look into. Being at a location like this, showing what you've done, kind of like I'm doing, will show people that, um, that have people that could invest money into things. That's also a way to get certain funds. Using open source license to sell products. I just handed Jason Gravili, which has been a good friend of mine and a great encouragement for a long time, a little levitator device. I stole that one right off my bench out there, so I'll have to put another one together so you can see it. But come and look at what that is. Um, actually, I've got some pictures up there, I think, in just a second. If you have a project you want to pursue, people are willing to help you, but you must throw yourself out there or you will never get help. Take the leap, never get up, and never give up, and do not let others tell you that you cannot achieve something. Okay? I have personally had a few of what they call trolls. Anybody got any of those out there? <laughs> not the ones in New York. The ones that bug you to death. The fun, I guess. I don't know. But I have a few of them. Don't let those people discourage you, okay? I I there's a few people that you know, they, they, they bug me, you know, and they do it all the time. It, it can be discouraging. I get to a point where, like, why am I even doing this? Don't let people tell you that. Do whatever you want to do. Just pursue what you want to pursue. I'm up here doing this because I have a passion, okay? And I just happen to have people that support me. That's the only reason I'm here right now. Just have a passion. And just do what you can do. Don't ever let anybody tell you that. The other thing I was talking about is here on your right. And uh, I got another picture here. That is a 3 16 inch neodymium square magnet floating. And if you can see here, there's no cords, there's no power. That magnet's just sitting in there. And you can blow on it and it'll just spin. It's fascinating. This is something that I told myself I wasn't ever gonna do, which is sell something because I'm not in this for making money. I'm in this to try to help you. That's why I'm up here. Um, but this is something that I that I can, I can I found the idea on the internet. It's nothing more than diamagnetic levitation. I'm not the first guy to do it. Nowhere near. But after building the 3D printer here, which was basically helped funded to get to this thing by Nate Fire Pinto and uh, Jeff Nate, basically. After I got them building this 3D printer that they have, they helped me build by donating pieces and parts. I actually grew up this device and created to now where I can just I just print off a part. I have to cast the two bismuth pieces, which are the two pieces of material in the middle, and get the components. Now I've got this fascinating little kit that I love to pay the magnet, and this is the only thing that I sell, and I do that to help fund my research. It goes right back into my research fund which is very different, and that's okay. I like using my resources. But this idea, again, was out there on the internet. So I didn't share it, I wouldn't have known about it, okay? If you'd like to see what this is, I'd really like you to come by my booth and check it out because you could spend hours with this. Jason, yep. don't get sidetracked. <laughs> don't get sidetracked. You'll be days, you'll be, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> These are some quotes that I just kind of dug out of my head or into. It's not about me or you, it's about us and our future and our kids' future. It's, it's about understanding, okay? If you don't understand it, that's not any good for you. So it's about understanding. Ego, greed, and money are the leading things that keep this research back. Research, not mine, in general, all of it. It doesn't matter what you're working on. Ego and greed and money. I'm, some people say money are the root of all evil. I'm not going to say that's true, but I'm going to say greed and, e greed and ego lead to that money problem that we have. Okay? Anybody else 
Have you seen that anywhere? <laughs> I think we're living in a big one of those things. <laughs> Absolutely. Throw yourself out there and just be real. Okay? Standing up here. A little shaky, okay? Just being real. Just a guy in my garage. Okay, this is the first time I've been on a stage. This is great. I'm glad you guys are here to support me. But just be real. When somebody watches one of my videos, and I'm over, I start my videos very interestingly sometimes. Sometimes I spin in circles. Anybody seen those? It's pretty funny. Light and fan roll. Anybody seen any light and fan roll? It's, it's fun. I have fun. I'm just real. Just, just throw yourself out there and be real. Um, by doing that, you show people that you're just an honest dude out there trying to do something, something good. And again, you got to remember this is based on the guy in his garage. But you can bring this all the way up to some corporate level if you wish to. Okay? These are principles in, in, in my life that I've used to get where I'm at. I know they'll work in a higher you know, position. So don't just think of the, the little guy. The big guys have the same things. Give and be given. Help and be helped. Love and be loved. And I say learn and be learned. Yes, that's right. Learn and be learned. Okay. Um, give and be given is probably the, the basic reason why I'm here. Because I've been I've been giving you guys as much as I can, and you guys have been giving me back. And the, the individual that got me in contact with uh, Jay Van Straden, basically, if, if if he didn't kick his foot out there and help me, help you guys, help my children. A better world, you know, give and be given. It, it, it's probably the, the base, the grassroots of, of why I'm here right now. If you're not having fun, it's not worth doing. Okay? How many people are stressed out right now? Just me? Oh. <laughs> no, I'm really not, but, but, but if it's not fun, it's not worth doing. Okay? And some of you who follow me very closely, They'll notice, you guys will notice if you start following me closely that I jump around a lot. Yeah, oh. I jump around a lot, okay? I do that because I get to a point where I'm not having a lot of fun anymore. It's stressing me out. I'm going to do something different. Not that I won't come back and finish what I started, but i got to get a break in there because if you're not having fun, well, it, it, it's not worth it. So pursue what you're doing, but have fun. Okay? And if you're not having fun, laugh a little, okay? Get in a fight with your wife, try laughing. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> if you believe, even though you cannot see, you will see. Okay? That quote is open for your own thoughts. That's my personal quote. I don't even know when I when I wrote it down or when I said it, but if you believe, okay, even though you cannot see, you will see. Okay? Think about that in your own lives. You can fly in your own way. I'm going to talk about ego and greed because that's probably one of the most biggest problems in this research. Can somebody tell me how much time I have? Okay. Ego and greed. This is a problem. I had an ego problem. I had a little bit of a greed problem. Not really. Ego and greed kind of go together. And ego is a it's a big problem, okay? When I first started building rodent coins, I was so excited about seeing this magnet spin at like 60,000 RPM. I'm like, ah, nobody's done this before. I'm the first guy. Ha ha ha! It's like, oh. and, and, and I've learned over the time that, first of all, you're probably not the first guy to do it. Because most people don't post stuff online. And by, by releasing my ego, okay? The greed has went away. Wanting money, you know, that kind of goes along with all those things. Not really concerned. Some, somebody asked me, why am I here? Are you looking for funding? No, just here to show you what I did. Try to motivate you a little, give you a little bit of courage. That's all, that's all, that, that's all that I run on, is encouragement. Okay, I'm just being honest. I have found that if you let go of your ego, you can go with it. Always give credit where credit is deserved. You will want the same. Do I agree? By open sourcing your ideas, you're just giving it away. Okay? Somebody posts a video three days later of my levitators and go, look what I did. And it says RWG Research on it because the files are on my website. I'm going to go, what the heck? Didn't you just at least give a reference? Let me think about it. Always give credit where credit is deserved, and, and, and you deserve the same. 
Treat others how you want to be treated. Mom, I'll tell you that. Anybody? Nobody's mom told me that. Are you kidding me? I'll have my mom tell you. <laughs> love others, and you would love yourself. Just be honest with yourself. Be honest with everybody else. Give and be given, help and be helped. I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. If you give freely, you will receive freely. Okay? When you give something, don't expect something in return. Give because you want to. And in return, you'll get something you never thought of. I promise. If you give without expecting something back, so you just said, each of us on our own have gifts. Use them to your fullest. I can build stuff. It's pretty neat. But I don't think that's my ultimate goal. My gift is encouragement. I encourage people. People send me emails that are so encouraging to me they keep me going. That I run on encouragement. A little bit of encouragement goes along the way. Teamwork is one of the keys. The other one is sharing knowledge. Um, we talked about this earlier. If uh, ten of you do something, you can get it done in a tenth of the time, working together. Teamwork. These are some of the things that I have actually accomplished doing using the principles that I just talked about, using the open source principle, the be honest principle, sharing, helping, being helping, being encouraged, encouraging. Post mortem bell off. We talked about um, the other website. If you'd like to see it, that Tin Man runs. That's what's interesting. Tin Man runs his own forms, and I kind of run my own forms, and together we, we do this pulse motor build off. And it's uh, Alternative International uh, International Alternative Energy Center. It's IAEC.formco. If you go to my website, they're linked together. But uh, we talked about the pulse motor build off. The PAP Noble Gas Engine. This is an actual picture of PAP's original motor, one of his original motors. Uh, this is actually a later version that they built, uh, the, Rona, the Rona machine shop built. These batteries right here are actually connected right now. And there's a video online that you can go watch. And they disconnect those batteries, and the alternator is enough to keep this system going. And the video is fairly short. I don't know how many people have actually seen that. It's kind of an interesting video. It's like, OK, maybe that's worth pursuing. That's kind of fascinating. As old of a video as it is, too, it's a very old video. This is a, basically it's a replica of what Bob Rohner has done. Bob Rohner has, is, is actually worked with Pat, he built that engine, actually. And he has a con constructive device that looks exactly like this, and very close to this. And basically, it's a piston with a sealed chamber with some electrodes, and he calls it the popper, because what it does is it goes, Pop, 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 and it's a testing device. This device is basically the cylinders in that motor. That's basically what it, that's what it is. Um, and I thought this was worth pursuing, especially after I got done working on some Stan Meyer stuff, because the gas principle between using the noble gases in this and using a noble gas in the EPG device and using uh, the argon and ionizing it and adhering the iron, or nickel or cobalt um, atoms to the uh, ionized argon and building this gas lattice that's supposed to be magnetizable, which is supposedly what he was doing as far as we know. And I started this project because of that reason. I wanted to learn more about the gases. And this is something that was uh, Bob Romer's working on that I thought I could replicate and prove that Bob is actually doing correct things because there are so many trash out there about dogging on this guy Bob that's just trying to do what I'm doing, he's trying to prove something. And everybody's dogging on him, I'm like, all right, if we both prove that it works, there's got to be something there. And that's basically what I've done. I've brought it to the level where I've proven to myself, okay, that's important, prove to yourself that these things work, okay? So, Pat Mobile Gas Engine is a very uh, successful replication in my mind of one of the the greater achievement, achievements that I've done personally uh, with, with the help of other people. Uh, a lot of the parts, the fittings, and all that kind of stuff actually had to be purchased. It's fairly expensive, and there was one gentleman who donated most of the funds for that. Um, I can't think of his name, but he knows. Uh, if, if you don't know anything about this, if you need to research a little bit, it's pretty fascinating. This is the EPG. Uh, 
Has anybody actually seen that photograph up there? Okay, has anybody actually seen that photograph? That's actually a replica. That's sitting out there right now. Uh, to my best knowledge, that's as close as we could get it. That has a mechanical pump on it. He also made two other versions, and this is a different version. That's why it looks a little different. But this, this is where I started with Stanley Myers. A lot of people start with the fuel cell technology because that's what they know about. And um, I decided to start with the EPG because, well, nobody built one that I found on the internet. Nobody. Alex Petty, which is a good friend of mine, is the only guy that I saw. And he helped me kind of brew up some ideas of how to start this. And I just threw the idea out there by reading the patents. A gentleman contacted me and got, got me a, 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 in touch with a gentleman that had photographs of the estate. Don Gable is his name. He had photographs of, this, of the estate but wouldn't give them out. All right, that's cool. So I called him on the phone and he looked at the picture while I was over here. Okay, what does this look like? What does that look like? And I was just writing down notes. A little bit later, he sent me one of these pictures and that's what I based this on. I drug this picture into Google SketchUp. Is drug a word? Sure. It's up here. It's good. I, I put that in Google SketchUp and I scaled it. I knew, I knew what some of the, the parts were and how the physical dimensions of the sizes, I knew what they were. You can measure it off an outlet back there if you know what the distance between the prongs are. You can, you can guide that and measure everything else and that's what I did. I measured everything I possibly could and came up with this replica. When I got this far, I thought, okay, cool. I built the hardware. I'm going to make this gas. Yes and check. I'm still guessing and checking. Haven't proven or disproven anything on this yet. That's where the, the patent mobile gas engine um, came into play is actually the gas. Um, I tried for a long time to figure out how to make the gas for this and could not figure out how to make a chamber. Worked on another project and voila, I had a chamber to make this gas in. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. Got to kind of spread your research out and you'll gain more knowledge out there. Pulse fire. Nobody knows about pulse fire. It drives me crazy. Please tell everyone about pulse fire. Because what it is, is it's a GUI interface to a, a, an Arduino, which you can purchase at Radio Shack for 30 bucks, 20 bucks. And it's a full blown data logger, pulse sequencer, and um, it'll graph a bunch of stuff. It'll do data exporting. Um, if you're into like HHO type of things and you want to measure liters per minute, you set up a read switch and a read switch and you actually and just hook the wires up to the controller and there's a liters per minute tab up there and it will actually calculate the liters per minute and you can just drain it and reset it. I mean, it's a fascinating piece of hardware that was actually developed for pulsing the coils that you see. You see pulse fire over here in the corner. Pulsing those coils, but it does so much more and it's full-blown open source. Check that out. I didn't, I didn't design this. Got by the name of William uh, Clanzar actually built this from scratch and it's worth sharing, so please do share it. There is a uh, young me, about five years ago, on Voltzilla. Does it look like a Voltzilla to you? Kind of a, people, people, people comment on this video, it cracks me up, and I do, I think it looks like a piece of trash. <laughs> That's because it's built with trash. What do you want me to do about it? Vortex space net. Um, this, this poor coil here is probably on the bottom of someone's shoe because it fell off the table and disappeared yesterday. But it's literally the size of my fingers, a quarter inch in diameter is something I was playing with. But this is kind of where I started, Vortex-based math. Um, and I've done so much of it and I enjoy the heck out of it. So again, look, look at Vortex-based math. It's very fascinating. Again, the 3D printer is a, is a handy tool that if nobody has actually looked into it, you've, you've got to just experience the 3D printer world. It's like, endless possibilities i mean endless possibilities and i actually had parts to build one for approximately a year but it didn't have the electronics and i didn't want to spend any funding on it i decided okay guess i'll spend some, some funding on it to shoot myself in the foot i should have built it a year ago used it so many places already including painting the house okay filament extruder uh, this is something i constructed in the last few weeks actually. The, the printer that you see here has what's called filament. It's right there. And it's just a small piece of plastic. It's ABS. It's a it's like a fishing line basically. But it's ABS. This this is ABS I'm using. And it's fairly expensive and I kind of want to have fun with this printer now that I'm using it as a tool. I want to like print bases and stuff for fun. 
So I decided to try to construct a filament extruder. I got online and I looked up filament extruder, and guess what? Somebody had already open source licensed and completed filament extruder. So 72 year old man, Lin 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 Lin, I can't say it's nice. Created one, and it was like, dude, cool. I don't have to do any work. I just got to put one together. And this is a this is a my own personal version of exactly what he's doing. Um, but everything's custom because I built it here, and then there it is. So anyway, again, those are my quotes. I'll leave them up there. That's the end of my presentation. Do we have any time? questions. I'll be, I'll be happy to talk with anybody out there, but if there's any questions now, I'll be glad to answer. Um, I, I was just wondering if you've uh, come across the conductive plastic that uh, has been invented the last few years for 3D printing, so you can actually put circuit boards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, with the 3D filament um, <coughs> machine that I, that I can make my own now, um, you could probably purchase the pellets to make that. You can buy that. I personally haven't, haven't played with it, but I've seen other people use it. It's pretty fascinating. Um, there's other plastics like nylon. Um, polypropylene is actually one that I'm going to try that I haven't seen anybody use directly. They use similar materials. But polypropylene is, is everywhere, so it's a good plastic to try to use. But um, I haven't, no. Uh, oh, hold on. Microphone. Can't hear you. Yeah, gotcha. Um, uh, on that material science aspect of it, the uh, bottom left uh, rodent coil we had up there mm -hmm. that had uh, the iron filament looked like. Um, uh, just, I'm curious what uh, material you use as the epoxy for that, uh, like sodium silicate or something of that nature, as well as uh, applying high voltage to the systems, as well as doing different layering of paramagnetic, paraelectric, so yada 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 materials, much like Mojoso had a bismuth horn mill to pre charge the environment, even though it doesn't really do much for <laughs> increasing mileage. Um, I'm curious what um, uh, steps you're taking to uh, apply caduceus coils with that in high voltage with different layering of materials, as well as the concentration of the material to the resin, you know? That's an interesting question, and it's a thought about this big. Let's discuss, <laughs> let's discuss it later. Um, something I haven't really put a whole lot of thought in. I, I construct these coils and most of the time I'm attempting to use them as some sort of a motor, like a, a prime mover. They're really antennas and, and not prime movers for, for what I'm trying to do, but if I don't try it, you won't know what happens. And publishing all my failures is probably the best thing I can do. Zero talked about that earlier. If you don't publish failures, you're wasting some other guy's time. Show them what didn't work. You know, Don't tell them not to try it, because you have different results. But you also got to remember to uh, share your, your, your hundred ways not to make a light bulb. <laughs> I think we're about out of Last question. question. Okay. Um, I saw that you were working on the standing wire, the, the spark plug. The injector? I saw the injector on your table. Pretty cool. So what are your next steps with that? Are you planning on working on that some more? Um, yes. Um, again, jumping around on projects. That's how I really keep focused on my projects. Because is anybody working on a project for like five years? Are you just like brain dead after five years of that project? It's like learning by other projects. So for me, coming back and visiting that project is very important. But the thing is, is I, I try to start I try to start something that other people can help finish. And there are five people here that are working on that technology that because of me sharing the information, are now working on it. So the injector itself was actually machined by another person. I didn't make that. I made most of the stuff on the table. But he machined that because he offered and volunteered that he's got machining skills and he made that. The insert is actually a 3D printed part right now that you've got to look at. It. And that needs to be ceramic. And I have to purchase that ceramic. And it's between $100 and $200 for a piece of ceramic this big. If you have it casted, it could be hundreds of dollars because they have to make the mold and everything. So those projects are like this very slow going thing. And I'm a guy with three kids in my garage. Anybody have that problem? I just don't have time. I'm a full-time working employee at a, at a place. So, so to revisit things and come back, all of the things you see out there, for instance, this rotary coil I just built for the pulse motor build off. 
um, three, three weeks ago. And I haven't really touched vortex-based math in almost four years. But it's up here. I, it's uh, something that I have a passion for. So going back and, and revisiting each one of these things is important. But the most important thing is I'm trying to start something and prove it to a point where now you can take that and run with it. That's what people need to do. Because I'm just a guy in my garage. You're, you're you know, I don't know if you got a garage, maybe you got a basement. Here's the guy in your basement. But 10 people work on this, 10th of the time it can get done. It's all about teamwork. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. I'm going to be outside. Uh, Want to make a quick announcement uh, tonight at nine o'clock?